This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, Mad Canadian will not be um, having his food truck this weekend, but be sure to check out his social medias on Facebook, on Twitter, search Mad Canadian Barbecue or TMC BBQ. You'll find him and get some updated news and information about where he is heading to next week. Uh, Let me go ahead and read one quick uh, review here that the Mad Canadian has over at his social media here. Um, We have somebody here talking about his food truck saying, can't can't say enough about the the meals that the Mad Canadian has. So good. They set set up at uh, the market and the customers are still talking about how good everything tasted. Highly recommend. Uh, I'll read some more ads, some more of these um, reviews in our second ad here. So be sure to check that out in the middle of our show. Um, again, check out the social social medias of Mad Canadian for more information. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. That's right. Roast to order. Your beans are not put to heat. They are not roasted uh, until you order them. That I there might be more efficient ways of doing things, but is that the way that gets you the best coffee? No. So that's not the way he does it. The coffee does not get roasted weeks or months ahead of time. It doesn't sit in a warehouse just to be put on a truck and sent to a different warehouse just to be put on a truck and put into a slightly smaller warehouse at the back of the grocery store just to be unboxed and stuck at a slightly smaller warehouse that is the grocery store shelves. Why? Why why would you why would you put your beans through that when you can order from the Iron Bean Coffee Company and get your beans freshly roasted? It, it just it doesn't make sense not to, am I right? I'm right. So you can buy your very own freshly roasted beans over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Buckeye Esquire, was is that a testicle joke? Are are we try are we trying to really go that far into the shenanigans this early in the episode? Okay, it was. It was. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh boy, Kyle. What 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 are we developing as a culture within our Discord among among our among our patrons? Apparently it's shenanigans. It is shenanigans. All right. All right, let's go and get the show started. We got a lot of games to talk about. I mean, it's the same number as every other week. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing, good friend Jared? You you did the you just you just got to make me smile. You got to do it again, um, yeah. Kyle. We we have a lot to live up to this week uh, for the Sloop picks. We went a collective, a collective, Kyle, collective because we're a team here. 12 and 14 in our sloop picks last week. 12 and 14 against the spread last week. I carried the load. <laughs> Yet we're still tied for the season. So what does that say about the rest of your year's performance? I had a terrible week one, but I'm making it up. I, I you're or or you're a flash in the pan. We'll find out. We'll find mm. out. All right. All right, we got seven games, well, six. You'll, you'll be sure to ch- check out the last episode, Thursday's episode, where we talk about the Maryland-Ohio State game. But we're going to go ahead and pick the other six games here in this episode. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. We got the first game here is a Pac-12 After Dark Friday night special. Stanford and Arizona State. 10 30 on Friday night. 
Arizona State, a 10 and a half point favorite. What? <laughs> what? What? Give me Stanford. Yeah. Give me Stanford in this. Yeah, I don't know if Stanford wins or not. Um, but, you know, they, they've had a couple of really nice games this this season so far. They're really overperforming. Over a score, you're you're going to give me a, a point spread of over a score. You're going to go ten and a half. No, I'm I'm taking that. I'm taking that for sure. Again, I don't know if they win this or not, but ten and a half. I'm taking that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and move into Saturday here. Uh, we got two other games alongside the Ohio State Maryland game at noon. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start Kyle, off. With sorry, but did, did you did you say that our, our guest picker one is Florida equals Buckeyes in yeah. the discord? Yes. And that he also picked Stanford. Yes, apologize for that. Um, Florida Buckeye Buckeye equals Florida equals Buckeye. Florida equals sorry. Buck. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, Michigan State and Rutgers noon kickoff again this Saturday. Sparty is a five and a half point favorite, and I'm just going to double check, make sure I actually did my pick correctly, because I have Sparty to cover here. I do not. I do. Yes, I have Sparty to cover. I did. I, I did not. Um, our, our 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 good our good friend Florida equals Buck uh, agrees with you. He also uh, picks Michigan State here. I hope we're going to go Rutgers. Why? I just I don't I don't buy into Michigan State that much. I think they're having a really nice year. Um, I, I do think I, they, I do think they probably win this game. But you're going to give me a few points to take Rutgers. I think Rutgers is capable of pulling an upset here. Um, what Ohio State exposed, for lack of a better word, with with Rutgers is just that they aren't incredibly athletic like Ohio state is like Michigan state isn't. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, but just looking at Michigan state, they've beaten Northwestern. Who's awful, awful this year. Youngstown state and FCS school, Miami, who we now know, even if we didn't know it at the time is awful. Nebraska who's playing better right now. I acknowledge Nebraska is play, playing a lot better now than they were in week one and two. They got taken to overtime. I, I just don't, I'm just not willing to put a bunch of money on Sparty right now. That's all I'm saying. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with the uh, unpopular pick here and go Michigan state. All right. Also noon this, this weekend, Oklahoma and Texas, the red river rivalry. Uh, the Sooners are a three and a half point favorite. These games have just been so close for Oklahoma. I feel like this is another one here. Possibly Texas could could be Oklahoma. This could be the the week that Oklahoma finally lose when they easily could have lost two other games this week. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take Texas in this one to cover. Kyle's going to take Texas. Um... Florida equals Buck is going to take Oklahoma to win and cover. Kyle, I agree with you. All right. Here's the yeah, thing. I agree. With, I agree with exactly what Esquire said. If um, Bijan Robinson can get going and especially early in the game. Yeah. Texas, Texas has a real shot to win. Yeah, I think that's important. I think it also depends on like which Rattler shows up is the tons of all tons of all offensive production Rattler show up or does turnover happy Rattler show up or do both of those guys show up? Because that's what typically happens, right? <laughs> yep. Where he's e equal parts, good and bad, right? Uh, to me, yep. this game was pick whoever's giving you points. I it's a coin flip as to who wins this. Oklahoma's just been living on the edge all year. Um, they've not played anyone good, and they've looked terrible while doing it. 
They've beaten one team. Uh, I, I don't even know who they are. They beat one team 76 to nothing. Outside of that, Tulane won by five points. Nebraska won by seven points. West Virginia, who, if you listened uh, to our to our Thursday episode, uh, we will tell you is terrible. Won that by three points. Kansas State, also terrible. Won that by six points. There's there's nothing here. And they the only difference between Oklahoma at five and zero oh and Ohio State at four and one is that Oklahoma hasn't played anyone like Oregon who could take advantage of their deficiencies. So, yep. yeah, t- to me, to me, I'm just going to take whoever is is giving me points and Texas is giving me points. So. There we go. That's that's who I'm taking. I'm taking Texas. Yep. Yep. All right, Jared. Uh, let's see. I think that's a good point. I know it's a little early right now, but I think it's a good point to uh, do a quick, quick add a read here, Jared. Uh, I suppose so. Um, am I going first? Yeah. Go ahead and, let's go ahead and start us off, Jared, with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Yeah, I told you about uh, why you should pick the Iron Bean Coffee Company, about it being fresh, uh, veteran owned and Ohio based and all that stuff. Right. Um, Hey, Kyle, pick between uh, medium and dark. Let's do medium. Medium. Kyle, let's talk about the Rocco. Now, the Rocco is available in both a medium roast and a dark roast. But we're talking, Kyle said medium. So we're so we're going to do. We're going to we're going to we're going to do this one. Uh, it's an Ethiopian single origin. Don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> nope, not even going to try. Uh, but it, it is a single e- uh, single origin Ethiopian bean. Um, he says there's something really special uh, and unique about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. And that's exactly what the Rocco is. It is an Ethiopian natural at its best. Uh, Notes include tropic fruit, blueberry, watermelon, jasmine. And these these are flavor notes. These aren't added flavors. This is not a flavored coffee. Uh, rich uh, acidity and a silky mouthfeel. Uh, he says this is a coffee that is pleasingly exotic. Uh, let's let's do another. Let's do another medium roast real quick. Let's. Uh, feel like we haven't done the Rage Against the Dying of the Light in a while, so let's talk about that one. The Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Um, this one is produced in the mountains of Colombia with uh, slightly unique attributes. Um, the coffee we've been getting from the region lately has been unique and exceptional. Um, the Colombian... Don't know how to pronounce that word either. Tamila is usually sweet. It gets notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. Uh, So that's what you're getting out of the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. But uh, you can go read all these descriptions for yourself and find your favorite, new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, Mentioned at the top of the show, Mad Canadian will be uh won't be out this weekend so be sure to hit up his social media to find out more information next week on where he's going to or tune in monday uh let me let me read you one more review uh from an actual customer from the mad Canadian barbecue company um that one here said the brisket sandwich with the barbecue sauce is the best i've ever had brisket was hot and juicy barbecue sauce was sweet but not too sweet and the portion was like no other very generous and my it was amazing my husband had the ribs and he loved them wasn't a big fan of the sides but he got but i got the potato salad and baked beans and there wasn't anything wrong with them um, that, um mad canadian it was, it was sides a, it was are really so hot. good it, that he's it was it was, <laughs> it was really hot today and the food came out fast really enjoyed the barbecue and i would highly recommend i think i would try some other sides, such as the green beans and coleslaw next time. But it is clear you all know what you're doing with some barbecue 
seriously the best. You will not be disappointed. Um, those are much, much more reviews from real customers over at the Medkini and social media sites. Um, again, check his social media um, for more information about him and his food truck coming up. Matt Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Jared, um, next the game's wife here. Was like, or the husband is like, these sides are just fine. And the wife was like, I'm with you, Mad Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Picking the Mad Canadian over her own wife. You know, Sometimes the sides are just that good. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes All right, Jared. Are just that good. SCC Battle of Georgia and Auburn. 330 kickoff. Georgia is a thir- excuse me, 14 and a half point favorite. And Jared, it's not enough. Not enough. Give me the dogs in an easy win here and cover. Yeah, I don't know why everyone over at the AP who who makes these polls keeps trying to convince me that Auburn is is good actually. They aren't. I I I get it. They 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 play in the SEC, so we have to like balls. Jared, who's who's their quarterback? Bo Nix. I'm just like why are they ranked 18th what what have they done because they have have one loss so i get it i mean i i I get it they play in the sec i get it like they barely beat lsu and lsu is garbage right now they barely beat georgia state yeah georgia georgia is going to beat them so bad that they will not be ranked this this week. Oh, they, so they, it's yeah, not yeah be. they will. They'll be they'll be like twenty five, because of course they okay. will. But yeah, no, no, no. Uh, George is legit good, and Auburn is not. <laughs> like they just aren't. They're, um, they're I, okay. They're okay. It's this this the spread should be like twenty four. Mm-hmm. I I yeah. would start sweating this spread at like twenty four. 15? Yep. Hell yeah. yeah, give me Georgia. Florida equals Buck um, says that uh, picks Georgia to cover. I just don't see Auburn moving the ball on Georgia's defense. Have Georgia winning something like 28 to 10. All right, uh, next up here, we're going back to the Big Ten here. We're going up north, back up north. Four o'clock. That's such a weird time. Four o'clock kickoff for. The game of the week here, Penn State and Iowa. Iowa is a two and a half point favor at home. Who do you have, Jared? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Penn State here. Um I I just don't know what to do with this game. I really don't. Um look you know you have to play the game at this point where we do have like five data points right each of these guys have played five games they've both won these five games you know penn state beat with beat wisconsin at the time we were like oh wow but maybe wisconsin wasn't that good they beat auburn and we were like oh wow but you know really honestly maybe auburn's not that good um they did what they were but here's the thing they did what they were supposed to do against ball state they, for the most part, did what they were supposed to do against Villanova. Um, they shut out Iowa, or excuse me, they shut out Indiana um, last week. The defense, at the very least, is for real. Um, I, I think what will be interesting to see in this game is what Clifford does against that Iowa secondary. Uh, I think that will be very telling. Uh, I, I think it'll be very telling. You know, has Clifford turned the page and become a really good quarterback or is he still the same Sean Clifford? We know, Uh, I think I think we find out this week. Um, Iowa, again. Who have they played? They beat Indiana. We thought maybe that was something it turned out not to be. They beat Iowa State and at the time we thought maybe that was going to be Iowa State underperforming this year. 
Kent State, Colorado State, and then they, they did trounce Maryland. They absolutely trounced Maryland, uh, even if that was a bit of an anomaly because of all the interceptions. But there are interceptions that they capitalized on and caused and all that. Um, ultimately, this is a kind of toss the hands up and pick the underdog game for me. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to just going to toss my hands up and pick the underdog and go with Penn State. All right. Um, Florida. By the way, it looks Buck. like Buckeye Esquire agrees with me. Uh, this is the game where Clifford looks terrible. Um, Clifford is a dollar <laughs> general Trace McSorley. And Trace McSorley was a dollar general JT Barrett. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Florida, of course, Buck says it got Penn State to cover in this game. Iowa hasn't shown they can function offensively without a bunch of turnovers. Their turnover luck runs out, and I think they lose big. I also think their defense is a bit overrated. They haven't played anyone. I got Penn State big here. Well, I get I guess I'm running solo here. I got I got Iowa winning this one here. Uh I just I think this is the game, and I think as uh, Buckeye Esquire hit it, hit it right on. I think this is the type of game that Clifford's just going to have a bad game here, and Iowa, who's just loves to turn uh, force turnovers in this game, is going to continue doing that in this game. Going to have Penn State struggle moving the ball like they did against, um, like they did against Wisconsin, just struggle to move the ball. I, I have. I have Iowa to uh, to cover here. It's pretty much a pick them two and a half points. It's almost a pick them there. So I'll, I'll take Iowa to cover. Kyle, now, now for the real question here. The real question here. Over under 41 and a half points. That's right. The over under is under. set at 41 and a half. Under. Kyle, that's that's essentially like 20 to 21. Yep. Like that, that's the predict the predicted score here. If you do the math, the, the if you do the Vegas math here, essentially they're saying I was gonna win this game 21 to 20. You you're going under? Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know that you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is All one right. of those games <laughs> where you're like, there, you know, someone has like a fourth and two at the 20 yard line and everyone's like, go for it. And even me, like most of the time, I'm like, go for it. No, kick the field goal. That field goal is that field goal is going to appreciate and value later in the game. I promise you that. Yep. All right. Last game here. Since I, I think this is on the Big Ten Network. It has to be Michigan heading on the road to Nebraska. Uh, Michigan is a three and a half point favorite. Who do you got in this one, Jared? Uh, this, this feels weird saying I'm going to Nebraska. Nebraska is playing much better now. I believe than they were when we saw them look terrible earlier in the year, which I think is saying something simply because Like, okay, like you lose to Illinois and that's 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 pretty unforgivable, right? Um, Yep. (laughs) They they barely beat Buffalo. Don't even let that 28 to three fool you like it was worse than that. And even then you should be beating Buffalo by more than 28 to three. Um, But, you know, they only lose by six to Oklahoma, although it seems like Oklahoma beats everyone by only six. So what does that really say? I'm not sure. Um, They took Michigan State, who's been playing really well and is now ranked 11th, took them to overtime, and then they just beat the doors off of Northwestern. And again, Northwestern's real bad this year. They are. I acknowledge this. But man, they just beat the doors off of Northwestern. Mm Mm-hmm. And while I acknowledge that Michigan, I think, has a really good offense or excuse me, a really good defense. I I just don't know how seriously I'm supposed to take their offense. Um, The Wisconsin score 38 to 17 is inflated like Wisconsin played or rather. Yeah, no, I said that right. Wisconsin played them closer than that. They only scored 20 points against Rutgers and Ohio State basically wasn't even trying to score 
five minutes into the third quarter and scored, what was it 55? Ohio State scored 50. Ohio State rolled out of bed with 55 points in their pocket against Rutgers. Mm-hmm. What what is Michigan's offense going to look like against a defense that at least looks like it's playing competently now, where maybe it wasn't playing competently before? Yeah, I I have Michigan to cover here. In order for Nebraska to win this game, it's got to be on. It's got to be Martinez on the ground. Uh, I don't trust Martinez throwing the ball. Uh, he's got he's got to be able to make plays with his feet. Uh, has sh- has sh- shown s- some success in these past few games here, but he's go- he's going to have to do it on his feet here. I just I just do not trust Martinez throwing the ball here. Ever since ever since he was the starter at Nebraska, he's shown some games where he can throw the ball, but most of the time is just just run the ball instead of throwing it. Uh, and knowing. Michigan's defense here where they're just very, very good at stopping the run here. It's going to be a long game for Nebraska here. So I, yeah, I got, I got Michigan to cover or not to, yeah, to cover the three and a half points. Kyle. All right. Real, real question now, real question now. Well, hold on. Uh, Over Florida under the equals, number of times we, we Florida we, equals Buck also has Michigan to cover as well too. And he says, I have no idea why the line is only three and a half points. And and yet I picked Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Listen, sometimes you got to go the opposite of what everyone else is doing. That's so you, you, you hear that. Um, oh, He's not on here anymore. Uh, so I was going to say you hear that you hear that uh, Stuart Jared just admitted he cheats. No, when when you pick on CBS, it tells you what everyone like, not 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 the people within your server, but like everyone on CBS, it, it tells you who they're picking. Um, like, for example, like 90 percent. I don't have I'm not logged into the CBS site right now, but like 90 percent of the people picking the games in the CBS pick was taking Michigan State, for example. Well, it was 90. You're probably the one that picked it. Now it's 89%. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our, that's our games here. Um, we, we've only picked, well, Kyle, okay, I, wait, we I, had three, three, I had one more additional question. We have three, we have three, nope, ga- nope, three nope. games that we picked the same here. One, addi- one additional question before we get away from Michigan and Nebraska. What is the likelihood scale one to 10? What is the likelihood that both teams just say, screw it and go into a triple option? Because the chance is not zero. uh, As funny as that is, I just don't see it. Will you acknowledge that the chance is higher than zero? Yes. Okay. That that's, that was my entire point. Okay. God, what do we have uh, in the uh, Ask so, Sloopcast mailbag? So, so we have so of, of all of our picks here, um, all three of us picked um the same for three games. Uh and then we have four games here Ohio where State, we've we've Maryland. picked differently. Mm-hmm. The three games we yes. all picked the same includes Ohio State Maryland. Okay. Yes, it is. Yep. All right, let's get into some Ask Sloopcast questions from our good friend Nomad. Who does Team Chaos uh, decapitate this weekend? If I had to pick one, I would would say screw you and pick two. I have two, Kyle. Okay. Uh, I think Texas has a good shot. Uh Uh-huh. Especially if they can get the run game going. Uh Uh-huh. I think they have a real shot. Don't sleep on Boise State against BYU. That's a good one. That's a good one. I uh, I don't trust Kentucky. I know LSU is not good this year, but keep an eye on LSU on the road to Kentucky. I think I think those are probably the the ones that I would keep an eye out for. What about Rutgers and Michigan and State and, 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 and Stanford and Stanford on the road to Arizona State? Because technically, that's you got to. You got a team going on the road against a ranked team. So, yeah. 
how do you feel about Rutgers is Rutgers is right 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 Rutgers is Rutgers is uh chance against Michigan State not high okay not high uh Florida equals Buck says Clemson at Syracuse you know it's um yeah okay yeah you had me confused there it's Wake Forest and Syracuse. Now, how do you but how do you feel about Wake Forest and Syracuse, considering Wake Forest is technically speaking the premier team in the ACC right now? Now, I, I, I'm going to hope he answers that. Yeah. Syracuse is bad. Syracuse is bad. Yeah, but is Wake are we are we going to all pretend like Wake Forest is good? Is that a thing we're going to pretend? No, to do? but you know, this could be a game. Maybe if you see going into the third quarter, it's still one possession. Maybe you have it off to the corner of your 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 screen there. This game, Wake Forest is a five and a half point favorite. Six and a half, five and a half, six and a half point favorite. No, uh, yeah, no, of course, Florida Buck. I I agree. Um, Kyle, Arkansas and Ole Miss, after having their doors beaten off of them last week, are technically both ranked and playing each other this week. Thoughts? I don't care. Thank you. <laughs> I don't care. Why either That's the correct are answer. That high. Why either of them are ranked that high? I don't know. So, to, so uh, Kyle, yeah. to, to, to pick one, to answer the question and to pick one, pick... Like you can't pick Penn State, Iowa. They're both top ten teams. Like one, chaos you know, is claiming I, one of those souls. Well, I, I'm I'm going to go with another Big Ten or Big Ten, a uh, <laughs> a um a top, top 10? ten team. I'm going to go with a top ten team losing here. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the Broncos over BYU. That that's a that's a smarter pick. Maybe maybe not. It it, it appears to be a smarter pick. It's a it's more, more of a big brain pick. I acknowledge that. But I'm going to go with the more obvious one and say Texas beating Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma has been on a high wire all year. Texas Texas always finds ways to lose in big games. I, that's why I felt this one over, <laughs> over Texas. But so does Oklahoma. <laughs> all right, Jared. Uh, let's see. Questions here or more questions from Nomad. Is Sparty for real or a pretender? If I had to pick one, I'm going pretender. Yeah, I yeah. If I had to pick one, I go pretender. But they win this this week easily. Uh, they cover, in my opinion. So here's the question: Is Kyle. third or fourth in the Big Ten East? Or let me say it this way: over under three and a half, third and a half, third and a half in the Big Ten I'm gonna, East. I'm going to go worse than three. Okay. They'll, they'll be fourth. They'll be fourth. Fifth? Buckeye Zach, fifth? Who, who do you have above who? them? Don't say who? Indiana. Rutgers. Rutgers. Well, if they win this week. Do you? Um, Indiana, Indiana finishes last in the Big Ten East. Um, I honestly think maybe Maryland does. I think Maryland does. God, Big Ten East isn't bad right now, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Big Ten we East is not last, bad right now. We laughed about it last year, looking at Penn State and going three and three. I think it was last year, and the oh and three, Michigan, and then three and three. Yeah, the Michigan having a losing record. Yeah, it was a laughing stock last year, but yeah, look, look at this year. It's a complete turnaround here. Absolutely. Um, All right, last, last I'm, question I'm, I'm here, going, I'm going Maryland, but it could be Indiana. Yeah, it could. Yeah. All right, last question. Does the Big Ten or the SEC have a better shot at two college football playoff teams this year? SEC. It's If you listen to our Tuesday's episode, Georgia and Alabama are our S tier. Yeah. It, at this point right now, it's the SEC. I think so too. And also like, we just got to talk about how deep the big 10 East is right now. Um, I don't, how, 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 how about how, how would it be if you get, what if the answer is yes, both of them do. 
<laughs> well, the Two ACC is out. USEC. Okay, well, hold on. Like, the ACC is out. The Pac-12 is is on life support. Who in who in the Big Twelve, other than Oklahoma, and I, and like I said, they're on high wire. They're not they're not lasting the season. So like maybe the Big Twelve's out. Is it's I, I don't think it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing to think about, but you still have to think about Cincinnati. Yeah, and Notre Dame, but but mostly Cincinnati. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so much Notre Dame anymore, but I agree. Um, yeah, that Cincinnati's the real is, is, is the real broom in the system there. If not, for, if something were to happen to Cincinnati um, and then they don't make the playoffs like and all like big, the playoffs really honestly could be a big 10 versus sec challenge it's not ridiculous yeah um yeah if you're cincinnati you you gotta root for the you gotta root for notre dame winning winning most all of the games moving forward that way that win looks a lot better if notre dame loses and loses another game or two games that, that game is not as meaningful anymore then it really hurts their schedule. I, that, that's that's a valid point. Um, I I don't because, know because no, I'm I'm not. I don't look at when you play them and when they're ranked, and no. then compare it. Then it should be like at the end of the season, which teams did you beat as they're currently ranked? Because I get I get tired of seeing people. Oh well, um, this team beat beat this team. In week two, and they were they were ranked tenth, but yet they finished four and seven in the year. Right. Yeah. Exactly. This is why polls shouldn't matter until November. Like yeah. first first weekend in November, that's when the polls should come out. I agree. Um. Yeah i I could keep going. We should probably end the show. Yeah, uh, let's do that, Jared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say. Ohio State, Penn State, Bama, Georgia in the playoffs. And maybe it's Iowa instead of one of the others. Um, but uh, it's it's weird if we talk, is it the Big Ten or the SEC that, that could get two teams in the playoffs this year? The thing is, is that the SEC is is has the best two teams like they they have they ha, i mean they literally have one and two right now but ohio or excuse me but the big 10 is still rolling like with three teams maybe even more if you count michigan state which i'm not going to do but you have three teams who are in legitimate playoff contention right now in the big 10 four 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 Four? Yep, four. Don't four. forget, don't forget Iowa. Iowa, no, I, Penn I State, wasn't. Ohio State. Oh no. Are you counting Michigan? Currently, right now, as the ring. Are you counting Michigan? How dare yeah, you? You caught me. You caught me. How <laughs> dare you? You know what? We're done here. All right. Take us out, Jared. We're done here. Uh, can't believe, you're you're fired. Uh, everyone come hang out in the discord. Um, it's free. There are premium channels, but most of the channels are free. Come hang out in the discord. Um, I don't, I don't know. Kyle barely tweets and I barely tweet and Kyle never really ever tweeted that much, but I'm really pulling back now. It's a cesspool and I hate it. So we're hanging out in the discord. Yeah. Right. Right. Buckeye Zach. Come hang out with us in the Discord. It's 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 moderated. Um, it's respectful. It's still a lot of fun, though. So if you're looking for a politics free zone and a toxicity free ish zone, we do our best uh, toxicity free zone. Come hang out in the Discord. Uh, like I said, it's both uh, it's both premium and free. 
but it's mostly free. So come hang out. Uh, Discord.thesleepcast.com. Uh, you can you can download the app to your phone or uh, just log into uh, the Discord website on your computer, whichever one makes you happier. You can do that. And again, we have an open invite that you can access simply by going to Discord.thesleepcast.com. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing really news related. I'll just, uh, unfortunately have to just personal news. I unfortunately don't, won't be able to watch any games because, you know, <laughs> weddings in the fall shouldn't happen. Yeah, guys, no fall weddings. What are you doing? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, not so Kyle will be full of amazing insights on Monday. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going I'm going to have to make sure I hit that record button and um watch and watch the DVR later on. There you go. Kyle, yeah, so. I'm a, do you have anything else for Kyle's corner? Nope, I don't. Unless you do. No, it, it, it wouldn't be Kyle's corner then. Kyle's corner presented by Jared. Jared's corner presented by Kyle. No. Okay. Uh, presented by Nomad. <laughs> Show us the money. <laughs> presented by Mad Canadian and the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, yes. All right. Yeah. No, that's it. Kyle, I'm about to do something unprecedented for the music. I'm going to go two in a row. <laughs> We're going Mojo Flow again. That's right. We're doing it again. We did it on Thursday. We're doing it again now. Why? Because if you're listening to this episode on the day it comes out, which is a Friday tonight at the Woodland Taverns, Woodland Tavern uh, in Columbus, Ohio, you can go see Mojo Flow. Guys, I'm pumping the show. These guys are amazing. They're entertaining. Um, I'm not even going to tell you like you can listen. You should listen. But no matter what you are about to hear. It's better live. So you should you should go see it live. You should absolutely go do that. It's tonight. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, it is tonight. Uh, go go see it. You're you're not a proper resident of Columbus until you've seen Mojo Float play live. I'm 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 just saying that out loud because it's true. So Kyle, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mojo Flow. <laughs>